are back. My first guest starred in the recent James Bond film, Tomorrow Never Dies, and co-starred on the popular television series, Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. Please welcome the lovely, the vivacious, a Terry Hatcher. <laughs> Hello, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and congratulations. Uh, you were on the program uh, a while ago, and since that time, you had a baby. Yes, I did. I like how I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you've had a baby. Really? Yes. Shocking yeah. news. Uh, what did you have, boy, girl? I had a girl. She's um, almost six months old. She'll be six months uh, old on Mother's Day. Okay. And a little girl. What's her name? Emerson Rose. Em Emerson is the name? Emerson. So you should have two more children and call them Lake and Palmer. Yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I got another joke. Somebody said to me, they said, uh, this is what they're going to tell her when she's a teenager. Knock, knock. Who's there? Emerson. Emerson who? Emerson, nice ones you got there. Purpose, I think if someone did this to you once, is no, that right? No, no, but okay. you know, one of my friends, like after they heard the name, that's what they came up with, and I thought, oh God, okay, she's going to the shrink, oh, it's over. I, I don't have, uh, I don't have a, a, a baby yet, I've never done that, but tell me, <laughs> I mean, I've never had sex. <laughs> I'm waiting till I'm 50, yeah. Uh, what, no, but when my friends that have babies, they hit these different stages, at six months, a baby's still kind of a blob, right? It, it doesn't really do anything, it doesn't... <laughs> sounds insensitive, but when I go by and they've just had a baby and they say, isn't it adorable? It's usually just this... Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't do anything. Doesn't well, anything. you feel that way because you don't have any, but she... she um, well, and, she... and most of his friends are monsters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't you say that about werewolf. <laughs> Frankenstein. She's not blobby at all, though, but she, she's very easy to entertain. We actually... She, she has... Um, you know, you do little things, like last night I was... Uh, had a bottle of Avion, and I would tip it up to drink it, and I guess it was the bubbles, I don't know what it was, but she would start laughing hysterically. And so you find something that works, and you think, good, okay, so then you just, just keep doing it, laughing, 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 for a half an hour, you know, and you think, oh, she's got a really good sense of humor, and then you think, actually, this is the same joke, over and over and over and over. She's I wish for an audience full of three-month-old. That. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that would be terrific, you know. Our running sister are like, no, 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 I'd like to come out here just with a bottle of water and go glug, glug. <laughs> Yay! He's funny, man! Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you don't tire. I mean, that, that's the other thing, is that kids want to see things again and again yeah. and again mm -hmm. and again, which could be, you know, maddening, I would think. No, it's, it's so great. When they laugh, it's like, you know, this blessed sound. It just right. fills you up with energy. It's the most spectacular thing when they laugh. So even if you're sleep-deprived, as I often am, you know, mm -hmm. it's like that's the thing that gets you through. Okay, well, let's talk for a second about an even holier event, the last Seinfeld episode, uh -huh. which has been deified in this country. Uh, tell us about it. Are you in the Seinfeld finale? Because I've heard that you are. Yeah, I, it, you heard that, huh? Yeah, it gets around that you're in the Seinfeld finale. It's funny, something starts and it's just everywhere. So I... could you just briefly describe the plot and what happens? <laughs> We got time. I mean, uh, yeah, we got plenty I mean, of time. The information is so valuable, isn't it? You must have people trying to, you know, ply you with wine and things. Come on. I haven't had that happen yet. I mean, I, I just, I'm sort of, you know, what, what's funny is that you don't, you don't really know. I mean, nobody really knows everything about the episode. Because anyway. they filmed it in segments, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I've heard that, I, re I was reading in Newsweek that they were sort of saying that you're probably going to be in there, and they said that Keith Hernandez is there i'm not you don't have to say anything but i I'm took by your shrug anything. that it's, it's all true show, okay but, I, yeah. like all right. <laughs> but keith hernandez had this strange quote about you yeah. in newsweek what did he say uh he, it'd be better if you said it probably than me i don't remember i'm oh, an idiot really yeah <laughs> he said i think he said that terry hatcher she's got a nice chest <laughs> Keith Hernandez. I mean, it's just it's sort of... That's what I thought. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not bringing this up to make people go woo-woo, but yeah. if they was to do that, and we have a woo-woo light in the studio. Maybe we should drink some yeah. water and see yeah. what happens. <laughs> They'll giggle. Um, uh, no, but, but I bring it up because it's Newsweek, and it's this quote from Keith Hernandez, and it just seems like the weirdest quote. Like, oh, I've heard she's got a nice chest. Like, 
you know, yeah. where have you been, buddy? <laughs> Not there. We haven't yeah. been there. That's not where we haven't been. Yeah, right. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know why he, what possessed him. But, yeah, you know, he's one, Keith Hernandez. One has to wonder. Right? Yes, one has to wonder. All right, we're excited to see that, and you may or may not be in it. May or but, may not. Yes, which means you are. Uh, <laughs> Wink, uh, we're going to take a break, though, a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk some more. There's a lot to discuss. More with Terry Hatcher in just a moment. You were, uh, we never really talked about this, you were a Bond girl. Yes. Which is joining a, a pretty elite group <laughs> of women, I would think. It's a, it, it's a, it is a cultural phenomenon. I guess it is. To be a Bond yeah, girl. Yeah, I guess it is. Y yeah. Did you like being a, was it really glamorous? Was it, did, did you? It's, you know, it's, uh, I mean, it was a perfect job for me to do because I was uh, three, three and a half months pregnant and it was just a little bit of work because it wasn't a really big part, but it's, you know, it's funny how people think that it's really glamorous and everything, and you have this beautiful dress and these diamonds and everything, but I was taped into this dress like you can't believe, and actually for one shot there was a wardrobe woman on the floor behind my back holding the waist of the dress together, and I'm like with Pierce, you know, kissing him or whatever, and here's this woman back here, you know, and <laughs> if you look really close, you can see her finger like popping into the shot. And then you forgot and went to a premiere, and she's like falling behind <laughs> you. <laughs> used to it, you know, uh -huh. it worked out so well, I hired her. No. It is funny how people, that they see these, that they see people like you on television or in the movies and they just assume it's glamorous and there is this side to it, which we've had, and you'll back me up on this, we've had you know, beautiful models on the show like Vendela, people like that, and they come on the show and they walk out and they're in this form-fitting, beautiful, strapless gown and the crowd's going crazy and that's what people see on TV and they sit down and their microphone pack, this has happened like two times, is taped with electrical tape to their back. Uh -huh. And you kind of, you're like, beautiful, and oh my god. Yeah, yeah that's hideous. a big secret. It Boy, looks like a battery just taped back it's there. It's true, and you should see some, some of the places they hide those things. I mean, it gets creative. <laughs> okay, look, you better settle down. <laughs> or I'm stopping your show right now. I don't want to know about that. Was your, was your husband excited when you became a Bond girl? Did, did he... Uh... He was. That was one of the reasons I did the movie, because he just thought it would be so cool to be married to a Bond girl. And I thought, well, that's the least I can do, is have that fantasy come true for him. How do you... You base many career decisions this way? <laughs> no, yeah, but that, that seems like an easy one to please, so I, I did. I, I was reading a, an, an article on you, an interview with you, and you were talking about how you go, like to go to department stores when you shop. Talking about not being very glamorous. You like to go to department stores and you like to change, no. but not in the changing room. And I was thinking, you hello. You sound like I'm some exhibitionist, you know. <laughs> I like to just change. No, actually what it is, is I really don't like to shop. I, I, I usually catalog shop because I, I hate to go to the store, but when I actually have to go to the store, then I really don't want to try the things on. Mm -hmm. So I look for the easiest way to do everything. The easiest way is just to point, I'll have that, that, and that, and then you take it home, and if it doesn't work, you can bring it back. But lots of times, you can't return stuff in certain kinds of stores. So rather than going all the way to the dressing room, taking all my clothes off, putting them all on, I'll just, I, I sort of start with putting the blouse over the clothes I have on, and I think, well, you know, if it's a little tight, then I know this fits because i got clothes underneath. So you, then you, you compensate go, for wearing like a giant parka and stuff right, at the time. Right, okay. But then you'll get it on and you'll think, oh, you know, I can't really tell. So then you start to take the layers off underneath the thing that you put on and all you women, you know, you know we do this. <laughs> we can take our bras and things off under without, you know, actually that, anything. That is the most anything. impressive thing I've ever seen. I've seen, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've seen women do that. Yeah. And I've actually seen them do it in a department store. They want to try something on, and they just go bloop, 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 and a bra comes out. <laughs> and it, it is, it... I thought about doing it for you as a demonstration, yeah. but I think that'd be going a little too far. Oh, well, thanks for, thanks for bringing it up. Come on, we have to do it now. No, 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 no. Well, then I why bring it up? That's, yeah, that's what to, I hate. Just to see I was going to take off my bra, but... <laughs> So. You can tease your whole evening. That's you, you can't do that. No, you have to walk away with that image. That's come back. You know, it has mm, to be a promise image, of yeah. something more. You know, and oh, we'll do that time. next time. But how does that take years of training? I'm always amazed. It's sort of a I Copperfield think, trick. You know, I think that people you're sort can of born with it. It's a gift. I think you have to probably unhook your shoulder joint to do it, or something. 
crazy exotic thing. No, it's thing. not that technical. It's just true. I'm not really sure. If you could draw it out for me, I'd be happy. <laughs> we'll talk after the show. Uh, I want to talk about you're doing a very nice, uh, nice thing for charity, mm -hmm. and uh, you should explain what it is. Okay, um, I'm involved in. Do you have it? Yes, I have it right here. Okay, so I um, designed this uh, Mother's Day card with an artist from American Greetings, mm -hmm. and um, it's for sale at Rite Aid drugstores for a dollar ninety nine, and all of the proceeds go to um, the Rite Aid Early Detection Fund for Breast Cancer, which um, offers free mammograms for qualified women and um, also pamphlets in the store of early detection and awareness and so it's to raise awareness uh, for breast cancer that's a very nice thing it's uh what it, it's it's at all right aid stores i guess everywhere yeah so people that want to do something for this uh, really good cause should go out and mother says you know coming up is so, it really yeah like oh boy days, so. <laughs> and if you forgot now you got to run out and get it someone take care of that for me <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just kidding uh, that's very cool, though. That's a very nice thing to do. Hey, thanks very much for coming back on the show. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, our best to Emerson. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, and uh, <laughs> come on back sometime. I will. All right, good to have you with us. Terry Hatcher, everybody. We'll take a break. Oliver Platt is coming up. We'll be right back.